Hello everyone and welcome to Garrock Farms. In today's video we're going to be sawing some more lumber. We're going to be continuing on with that project up on the, the back 80 there where we're sawing up that pile of logs that we made last fall. It's a beautiful day today. It's the end of February while I'm filming this and it's supposed to be a high of like 65 today with a strong wind coming out of the south. So apologize for that wind noise but we're going to keep on heading to the back 80 there and uh, we'll start helping dad saw some logs. Much a six gallon tank. Look at that, it's exactly six gallons. So, Dad's starting everything up here initially. He's going to check over everything, make sure his height's correct, all his hydraulics are working, and also check uh, the level of the, the deck of the mill. Check how level it is. So, he's got his tape out, he's checking the blade height. He's also got to install the water or the lubricant for the van saw. So that initial setup is really important to make sure that cutting is, is nice and true throughout the day. Right now, uh, he's cleaning up some of his extra pieces, his edge pieces, and uh, gonna make some use out of them here. Looking at our pile here, if we don't have any problems, we should be, uh, be able to get pretty close to wrapping up this pile here and uh, possibly be ready for uh, clean up and, and take down by the end of the day today. So fingers crossed that we don't have any problems and everything goes smooth today.
Okay, we just finished up with all our uh, flitches, our extra pieces. That's a bit of a tedious process, but we're past that now and we're moving on to uh, actual logs again. So should be all pump out some lumber a bit faster now. Things have been running smooth so far. This log's really uh, heavy and dense. I don't think the log roller is able to bite in like it normally would.
So it's about four logs later and things have been moving pretty smooth. Dad wanted to stop and, and talk a little bit. Definitely cherry saws better than hickory. Yeah. So yesterday, I don't know why, there wasn't even really that many knots, but that blade starts to do the old wave and for veneer lumber, it kind of ruins it. You know, the, whatever that piece is at, in some time. So we learned to switch out our blade sooner. That's kind of a fine line to figure that out. But I'm guessing we could probably go through twice as much cherry, maybe three times as much as hickory. So you guys let me know, you sires let me know what species really cuts hard. Because right now, from, so we're doing cherry, hickory. I mean, I've done a lot of white oak and red oak with the Amish and stuff, but I want to think hickory is about the worst one. So every, every slab will do the old kind of curl up on you turn the log it don't matter which direction the log is it seems like there's always some pressures there that ain't normally with uh, other species the thing is a cherry like this thing is about as crooked as they get but basically what's out here is not going to amount to much we might have two or three boards that'll give us a little something so if we cut them off he's just completely waste but we got a girthy piece it's all right those smaller crooked ones you get down to a four inch Kent, it doesn't really yield up to much. Depends on, walnut would be, you wanna get everything out of those things, but it's all been going pretty good. When we get done with this project, once we get this mill back to the shop, we're gonna recheck all our settings again, blade height off the deck. And I think this chain's pretty tight. I think that one was, one of them was getting, seemed to be getting a little loose, but might have to feel that out with Timber King, where to, which end to adjust from and all that. Yeah, this would be the first big uh, consistent job this mill's had other than dad just messing around in the yard. It, this would be the true work hours now. That we're yeah, so this, this is all veneer lumber. So we have to be careful, be very consistent. They've even told me, can be careful about the waves because they'll, you know, don't matter how nice the, the log was, you, you, they're gonna dock you on that stuff. A little bit of wane, which is a little bark on some edges here and there. And I've done furniture stuff before. Typically, if they strip that all up in the flooring or that type of stuff, a lot of times that ends up being wasted anyway. I want to think we have to be a pretty good judge of, well, to put those flitches back on and, and trim them down more. Or if you got a little bit on one end, it's, it's maybe better to just leave it and you'll probably get more yield. So we'll see when we bring this stuff to those guys, how they grade it. But that's the thing I'm, I think I'm going to learn a lot about what they're looking for. So far as dimension lumber, you know, like let's say barns, you know, a little bit of that wane or bark on the edges on some real nice pieces, it's just as well. Don't matter, you could put them on the side that gets covered up with the steel or roof boards, for instance, it really doesn't make much difference. So you can kind of get away with some of that a little bit, and get more out of your logs. Well, yeah, that's a little update and uh, we're gonna keep on moving. You guys make sure to leave plenty of comments if you got them.
Okay, he's gonna keep on sawing. I'm gonna head back down to the yard and let the cows in and I got a short meeting down there I gotta attend to. Looks like dad's been making some really good progress while I've been letting in the cows. He's got two logs left, but he's thinking he's gonna leave them to make uh, beams, some bigger stuff. So as for the veneer lumber, this should be the last log. And then we got a bunch of clutches to clean up, a lot of scrap, extra pieces that still uh, to make a board. Letting in the cows went good and having that meeting went really well. the logs all cut that we're going to cut for logs and those the ones got a little sore in the end the white oak somebody did mention they wanted some kind of wagon beams or something so we're gonna save those for possibly that and all these guys to probably got two heaps of these to trim up they take time there that's what i was about to say what i've noticed is that probably takes the most amount of time cutting wise for what you're getting See, so that's the reason for an edger. So if we were gonna do this for a business, eventually you'd have to get an edger. Otherwise you're tossing that stuff away or taking all this extra time because we're using a lot of fuel and stuff. So what you'd do is make some kind of jig so you can get them all laid in there real nice and then you would take them over to where your edger is and shove them through. 
this will go, I mean, for, you know, like if we made beams out of that guy, we maybe have five, six of those switches with any, no big deal. If that's all you end up with. You just make out of them whatever you can get. But we were gonna stop quick for a break. We, uh, someone was kind enough to drop off some donuts, so shout out to you, Nate, for doing that. You gotta eat them while they're good. Yeah, dad's and, gotta get And before get a hold of his them. brothers get home. Yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. Okay, I am back down in the yard. We we're gonna end off the video here. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for our other uh, sawmill videos. We're gonna have a pile of them. And remember, if you haven't already, go check out gearockfarms.com. Subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. And uh, we will see you guys next time.